Hey everybody, this is Jojo the HVAC man and hello to all of you wherever you are in the world, whatever time it may be, day, night, whatever. So glad to see you, glad you're back. Uh, and I'm going to do a short presentation today on CFM and velocity, how they work together and how they can destroy capacity. Not only if you got the right CFM, which, you know, a lot of people kind of focus on that, what they forget is the velocity. And if you don't have the fan at the right speed, or you don't have the air flowing at the right rate through the coil, you're gonna lose capacity. It's gonna screw up your superheat. It's gonna screw up your subcooling, uh, especially if you got a fixed meter device, but even a TXV, and it will kill capacity. So CFM is not the only thing to worry about. So here, let's get started and let me show you how it looks. So here, you just see I got my little notepad here. So everybody knows, by the way, I did my nails just for you guys. So everybody knows that, well, maybe not everybody, but you guys know that for every ton, right, of air conditioning, we need 400 CFMs of air. So that's 400 cubic feet per minute. So remember, air is literally uh, a quantity. It's just like, um, so 400 cubic feet per minute of air would be like 400 gallons per minute of water. That's a lot of water. <laughs> but, you know, if you got, uh, you know, five gallons a minute um, coming out of a water hose, that's actually measuring the quantity of water coming out of that hose at a given amount of time. So is this. Air is just, you know, it's a cube. All right. And we're saying we need 400 of those jokers, okay, to go through the coil to get the right capacity. And that's per ton. So for instance, you know, two ton gonna be equal to 800 cubic feet per minute of air. Okay, now, if you've been around in the field, and been schooled a little bit, this is pretty elementary. But what we don't know is this, okay, is if you look at this, 800 at what feet per minute, all right? Well, what the heck is that? All right, this is how fast it's going. This is the velocity. All right, that's how fast it's moving through the system. And velocity comes into play in several areas. Like you want uh, your airflow to have so much velocity going through the ductwork so that you get it down the pipes and out where you want it to be. Now, ultimately it's the grill, the register at the end of your duct runs that really determine how much throw and how much CFMs you get out of those vents. But let's talk about the air across the coil for right now, okay? So you gotta think about it. If you've got a design feet per minute by the manufacturer, that's gonna tell you that that air's gotta move at that speed. So what is it? By the way, I wanna be using a lot of paper here, all right? So the average Airflow design we want in the main trunk of a duct system is 800 to 1,000 feet per minute. So, you know, just think like this is miles per hour, but it's feet per minute. That way we don't blow the duct work apart, all right? So 800 to 1,000 feet per minute. This is kind of what you're looking for when it goes through the evaporator coil. So here we go. We got an evaporator coil, right? Okay. And let's say we're running it at 45 degrees. So saturation temperature is 45 degrees. And we got the air coming in here, and let's say it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and let's say it's at um, 69 wet bulb. Say what? What the heck is a wet bulb? Well, glad you asked that question, all right? Dry bulb is what you're measuring with your thermometer, all right? Wet bulb is what you're going to measure with your cyclometer, okay? If you've nicely got one with all our fancy dancy Bluetooth tools out there, most of us have got those now. But you want to know what the moisture content, that's what that is, is in relation to the sensible heat. So that's sensible heat and latent heat. But when it goes through the coil, and we're not going to get into wet bulb and dry bulb like I would love to, but ain't got time. 
I'm focusing on velocity here, remember? All right, so here we go. We got a, a we got air. This is the properties of this air, and it's coming through, and we know that we've designed our system to have 400 CFMs per ton. So let's say it's a one and a half ton system, all right? One and a half tons. So we want to move this 1.5 times 400, right, is 600 CFM. All right, so that's the quantity of air. We gotta have, if you got too much air, then we're not gonna get enough capacity. We're gonna be overrunning the unit. It's not gonna be able to keep up. If we have too little air, then we know we'll freeze a coil up, right? Okay, but what about if we've got the right quantity? All right, and we're moving it too slow. So let's say instead of 800 feet per minute, we put that bad boy down and we drop it down and we get that airflow um, slow, but we got the right quantity. That's really not a big deal, okay? Slow airflow. Not, now don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about lower CFM, right? So if we lower the CFM per ton, we're gonna remove more humidity. I think a lot of us folks out down here in the Southeast got that pretty good but I'm talking about the velocity of the air at the right quantity. Here's where the kicker is. This is what I wanna show you. This is my little, my little brief message to you, okay? Here we go, it got the coil, okay? And it's 45 degrees, let's say. We got the air coming in, and let's say it's a one and a half ton unit, right? So that's 600 cubic feet. Per minute. But let's say we got that bad boy screaming at about 1,500, 2,000 feet per minute. And it's screaming through that coil. Well, it's not, it's not going through the coil slow enough to absorb the heat out of the air. It's going to go screaming right past it, and it's not going to absorb all the heat. Now, I'm not talking about sensible heat, so... You guys that are dealing with sensible heat only, you're at 450 CFM per ton. I know you're more quantity of air, but I'm still talking about speed, how fast it goes through that coil. So the only example I can give you is that if you've got a pool of water, right? So we got a puddle of water over here on the table. All right, and that's water. And I got a rag. Right, I got this rag, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow. I'm gonna. Well, I take it. Let's do this. Let's say I take it and I whip it across that water real fast. Just, just you know, you know, what's it gonna do? It's gonna pretty much sling that water right off the table, right? But take that same rag, same puddle of water, same amount of water, and then slowly drink it across there. What's it gonna do? Well, it's going to soak up the water because you've given it time to absorb the moisture into the rag, okay? Now, in a very general principle, what I'm trying to show you is that you've got to have that air going through at the right speed as well as the right quantity in order to give the, the, the it's got to be in contact with the surface area of that evaporator coil for it to remove the heat for that, the, it's called the rate of heat transfer, okay? the rate of heat transfer. And if you're not careful, you're gonna kill it, and that air is gonna stream right through that coil, and you're not gonna get a lot of capacity out of that unit because of that. Also, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna be absorbing heat, so now your temperature, your coil is not gonna stay where it should be. If you've got a, um, if you've got a TXV on the job, well, now what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna absorb a lot of heat. So now you've got cooler refrigerant going back to the compressor. It gets compressed. It goes back to the condenser. And guess what you're gonna have? You're gonna have a high subcooling because you got no heat in that condenser. So the refrigerant's gonna be cooler than normal and high velocity air on a TXV system 
can definitely cause a high subcooling. But your superheat's gonna be pretty darn close because you got a TXV. So if you got a high subcooling and you got a moderately TXV uh, superheat looking, but you're losing capacity, don't start sucking out refrigerant, okay? Look at the airflow. Now, where does this come into play? The most common way this happens, how do we get super duper fast air going on? Constant CFM, baby. Constant CFM. What happens? Constant CFM, okay? One more piece of air. I'm almost through. Hang in there, all right? A ECM motor, right? And my focus is out here. Focus. There we go. An ECM motor, okay? We're talking about two types. We got a constant torque. And we got a constant CFM. In the old days, we called it variable speed. Okay, and now they even call it true <laughs> variable speed. <laughs> I'd like to know what the untrue variable speed is, but that's all right. That's a whole other day. But anyway, I think they're trying to keep these two straight. But a constant CFM, all right, what it does is it increases the RPMs of the motor to maintain CFM. Got it? So it cr cranks up the RPMs to maintain CFM. Well, when that RPM starts going up, velocity starts going up. And we start losing capacity. You think, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. The whole purpose for a constant CFM motor is to maintain that cubic feet per minute across the coil while, the, while everything gets dirty. And this is true. To a point, but I'm telling you right now, if you run that CF that constant CFM motor at max amps, in other words, that thing is running like a hurricane. It's sucking the filters into the return. The three-year-old, you can't get him off the return. The canary got sucked up the return. The cat got sucked up the return. You guys know what I'm talking about. It sounds like a poltergeist through the house. You go up in there and all the grills are rattling. And all right, that's bad, all right? All right, one, the system won't drain very well at all on a negative drain system. That's a whole other topic. But you pull an amp draw on that constant CFM motor and it's running max amps, you're in trouble, all right? And you're gonna lose capacity and you're gonna be screwing around with charge and everything else. And what you gotta do is you gotta get the speed down. Now, how do you do that? By reducing the static pressure in the duct, okay? Constant CFM will overcome high static, but at a cost. One, money, sear, out the window, and capacity starts to drop. So get the, and noise, noisy, noisy, noisy. So get the velocity down to get everything right, okay? So it's not just CFM, but you want to get that velocity in line. How do you know on a constant CFM if you're about right? My rule from just a long, long time of measuring and checking is you want to be about half of rated amps. About half of rated amps. If you're running about half of the rated amps on a constant CFM, then you've got your CFM, no problem, okay? It'll give it to you. But now it's running low. It's gonna give you the sear rating you want and the capacity you want. The more you push it up towards its max, okay? the faster that air is moving, and the more your problems are gonna be. Drainage will be an issue, noise will be an issue. You'll be sucking water off the evaporator coil, sucking it into the motor. I've seen it throw it down the, the supply line. So get that constant CFM down by getting your static pressure down. So how do you do that? 30 seconds. Here's your air handler. Right, blower, yeah. evaporator cool. Air coming in, air going out. Everybody good with me? All right, cool, all right. Now what you wanna do is you see this, this thing right here? 
And it's like 18 to 24 inches long. That's called a bullhead T. It's a short plenum. The air hits it, comes back. Air hits it, comes back. Air hits it, comes back. This is a problem. Take that off, do a squared around and a round Y, split that air left and right, you'll drop it. Same on the backside, no boxes with ductwork coming in. Turbulence, 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 okay? You want the air to come in smooth, go through the air handler, and then come out smooth. And of course, the best would be a trunk line. Air straight in, air straight out. Okay? All right. More later, but I hope that helps. You guys have a good day, night, whatever it is for you. If you got any questions, be sure to hit me up with some questions. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I'll get some more coming. Y'all take care. Thank you.